and the women kept saying to me, please, Sarah, please work with the men. <laughs> and so I looked at what was going on in society and uh, from my experiences, from experiences that other women were telling me they were having, it was really clear that um, it was time for there to be um, more champions for men, um, empowering men right now. Uh, because there's there's a lot that is actually trying to bring men down um, and that's not good for any of us right like strong women like myself we're not attracted to men that are feeling disempowered we're attracted to men that are strong and confident and like really doing amazing things in the world and so I wanted to you know what I noticed is in my own life it was hard to find that type of guy um, and like really have great connection with him. And, um, and so I wanted to bring something to empower guys to find that confidence, which starts with sexual confidence that, you know, first and foremost, is like that internal sexual drive. And then like, no, when a guy knows that he's amazing in bed, like that really stems into every other aspect of his life. And so I decided I was going to do it. There was an issue in society. There was a hole and I was going to fix it. What, uh, when men come to you, um, and I, I imagine, uh, like, like a lot of really good coaches, uh, a lot of people come to you through referrals. It's like one guy comes in and goes, Oh, I got really great results. That, that's what happened for me. Uh, my buddy, he's, uh, he's like, Oh, I think, uh, so you should check her out. I go, okay, let's, let's do that. I'll just get on the phone. I'm, I'll see what's going on. And what I do know is if anyone, if I ever want to get better at something, I hire a coach. Yes. A lot of people go, Oh, I'll read a dozen books first. I'm like, fuck that. Just get a coach. Cause that's where it's going to end up anyway. Yeah. It, it, I, like reading a book is just to see if you actually want to dive into it. Um, it happens with people in business all the time. It's like, oh, I read business books. I'm like, yeah, but do you have like a business coach? And they go, mm -hmm. well, I was like, well, that's probably, that's indicative of the results you're getting. Right. So, um, so I know I was like, I was like, you know what? Sex is an area in which I want to improve. It's, it's like, um, there's a level of dissatisfaction that I had. Um, and just the, I realized one day I was like, I haven't put much attention into it put a lot of attention into like physical health, put a lot of attention into business, you know, and, um, you know, things like communication, I put a lot of attention into that, like, like intimacy, but mm -hmm. actually putting attention into like sex and we go, no, not a lot, not a lot. And all those things improve sex for sure. But going right after the meat of it, what, when guys, come to work with you, what are some of the, what are some of their complaints? You know, some of the things they're struggling with that you get to help them with. A lot of the time guys uh, come to me, they are, you know, not in relationship and they want to be, or they're in relationship and they're not happy with the sex that they're having. Um, maybe they have come out of a relationship. They're, you know, newly broken up or divorced or something. And they really feel like during the time they're in relationship, the, their sex life deteriorated um, and they, they feel like maybe they've lost their, their mojo or they're like, um, don't really, they've lost some sexual confidence because of that. They feel like maybe it's their fault the relationship ended because the sex uh, wasn't as good as it should have been, that type of thing. And they want to make sure that doesn't happen again going forward. Uh, or guys have sexual dysfunction that they're struggling with. Uh, and um, if it, many guys, like they'll go to their doctor and their doctor's like, hey, this is all in your head. Go see a sex therapist, go see a sex coach, something like that. Um, and so in those type of issues, I can help because the program does a lot uh, around the psychological and emotional components of how we show up um, sexually. And so it's, it's a mixed bag. Some people are like really interested in Tantra and they're super excited to learn the advanced Tantric uh, techniques and practices that uh, you can't find in books. So it's, it's different, different people, different uh, things that they're looking for. Yeah, my, my experience uh, being in your program has been um, 
some of the concepts I, I had been introduced to because I had read David Data and some I've read some Tantra. Um, I, I've even done a couple of Tantric Pujas. Um, and it was, it was like a nice introduction, but I didn't know how to keep up the practice. Yeah. yeah it's like, oh, it's like, okay, I go do this thing or I get this concept. I'm going to use it when I use it. But uh, one of the things that's really nice about your program is like, there's this structure that is like, oh, I'm going to do this every day, or I'm going to do this at least four or five days a week. And it's 30 minutes, which is, um, which is actually a challenge for me. But uh, the, it's, it's really nice. It's because it's like, oh, I know what's getting me results. Like I, if I do this, the results are obvious. You know, if you do these practices, it's just like working out. It's like, uh, you know, it may not be obvious the first week. You get in like the third, fourth, fifth, sixth week and go, oh, I didn't even know that you could feel like this. This is a different type of experience than what I was having before. Um, I, I'm curious what you see in our culture as a whole and uh, where, what, what do, I, I have this picture of what the average American thinks uh, good sex is. And my impression of what good sex is, is much higher than it used to be. I used to think good sex, check these boxes. But now I think about sex and I go, whoa, it's way more expansive and a much, there's just a, there's just a lot more there than I could have imagined five years ago. So wh what, where are people at currently and what's possible? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, you know, they'll look up some, you come across my site because they're looking for different sex positions or sex techniques. Like how do I make her squirt? How do I give her an orgasm? How do I, you know, go down on her? Things like that. I, and that is all fine and it's really important, but I like to think of those things as um, the basics, like when you like learning how to walk when it comes to sex, like these are just things that you've got to know. And like, if you don't know that, um, you're basically like way down, down on the bottom of the totem pole, as far as what it comes to what the potential of, of sex. And then once you learn all of those things, like, yeah, I absolutely know how to make a woman squirt, know how to give her orgasms in all parts of her body things like that, like no different sex positions, but like then expand. And that's what Tantra is. It's like going so far beyond it's having sex with like, not most people have sex with their mental body only because we're really in our head as a society. Like it's so hard to get out of our heads. Um, and so like not most people don't even, they're not even in touch with the sensations that are happening in their body when they're having sex. And so when a guy ejaculates, like that will be um, an orgasmic experience for him, but it, it's more like a release. Like it feels good. It's a release, but it's not life-changing in any way. Uh, most women are not having orgasms that are changing their lives, like really shifting their perspective on themselves, on the universe, on their partner, things like that. And so that's what Tantra does. Like, it's like literally going into altered states of reality together, like feeling, you're feeling like you're on a, a medicine journey, but you're not like just using your breath and the intimacy of the, of yourself or with your partner. Uh, and so it's like the base line of what people think good sex is typically is like oh well i can make her squirt so you know that was good sex or uh we had anal that was great or, sex or i could last a long time i could last a long time yeah, yeah. you know like i i'm not the you know the two minute guy so but it's like all right no we need to completely change the conversation of what good sex is yeah my um my experience of it is most people are operating from just the biological perspective where there's uh the purpose of sex is to create offspring so that the the human race can go on that that's pretty much that's been the purpose of sex uh from a biological perspective but then there's the purpose of sex from an energetic perspective uh, the uh, expansion of consciousness all these types of things 
Um, and the, the little bit of experience I've had with Tantra is, is the, the energetics that are involved and the, the experiences I'm having there are make uh, getting off as the goal seem really silly. And I remember, I remember the first time, um, it was years ago, I went to a, uh, a one taste event and uh, it was, man, that was maybe five years ago. And the, 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 the whole concept of being in touch with the, the moment and getting out of, uh, what was it? It was, it was like, it was like, I, I actually got present to enjoying the journey instead of focusing on some destination. Yeah. And I, I, I just broke down and cried on the way home. Cause I realized I was like, Oh, I've been missing. I've been, I've been doing, I've been doing sex that way for this long. I've been missing out on all this other. Um, and even though I've had that awareness for five years, it's something still, I'm still working towards, like, I don't know if I'm working towards anything, but it's something I'm enjoying exploring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's something like there actually really is a grief process that happens with people when they start experiencing this because they realize how much they've missed out on. And it's, it's interesting. And thank you for sharing that because not a lot of people do, but it's like, I went through that myself of like, wow, like so many years of denying my body the pleasure that is available and that I deserve to have and that I really truly crave to have for so long. And like, now I finally get to experience it. Yeah. Um, I, I, I've noticed through doing the practices that you, uh, you have us do, um, that I have, I experience a cap on my pleasure. So I've noticed I hit a point and then my mind wants to come in with a thought. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I go, Oh, it's a, it's around that same amount of, it's like around the same time, period of time that I'm in the practice. And I go, oh, it's interesting. I, I, I'm bumping up against something. Uh, it's, it's that amount of pleasure is triggering a, uh, an emotional response. It's, it's triggering a thought to occur. Uh, it, it pulls my attention into uh, things on, I noticed that when I hit a certain point, I start thinking about how I could be better mm -hmm. at other things in my life. It's like, start thinking about business. I start thinking about my, uh, my fitness. I, start, I was like, I was like, Oh, this is funny. There's like a, uh, there's still a piece in there that doesn't feel good enough. And I was like, it's like, Oh, I can't enjoy this because I haven't earned it from, you know, being good enough in these other areas that I've, I've created a lot of value. Yeah. Is, it, is that something that's common that you notice? Yes. And so that's why we do uh, a lot of work with the primal brain and seeding that we are worthy, that we are deserving of having this type of pleasure and the open mouth, inhale and exhale, the like going back to that breath will help you come back into your body again. So when those thoughts come up, you know, acknowledge them, don't shame yourself or anything like that, let them be there, but then come back over and over to the sensations in your body. Because what happens is the primal brain is like our source of pleasure, but it's also the gatekeeper of our pleasure because it's only concerned with survival and procreation. And so if for your entire life, you've experienced a certain amount of pleasure, your primal brain is cool with that because it knows that you can survive it. But anything beyond that is like, well, I, why do you need that? Like you're already surviving. Like, you know, so it's, um, it's going to definitely put blocks up for you. And that's also why we use the visualization practices of like fully experiencing yourself in five senses reality through visualization in the ultimate um, expansion of bliss that you're trying to get through because then your primal brain, which doesn't differentiate between uh, what is uh, fantasy, what you're imagining and what is actual reality. It's like, okay, I have survived this. This is, this is okay. And it helps pave the way so you can break through those barriers. Um, and then also using sound and movement to help you move through it as well. So it's a combination of a lot of different techniques 
uh, that you come at the brain from different perspectives to, to help you expand and move through the limitations that, that are there just from conditioning and, uh, you know, survival and all of that. Yeah. Are there other areas? Or, um, I mean, it sounds a lot like, you know, self-limiting beliefs. There's, there's uh, a cap. I mean, I, I know this in business, you know, there's certain numbers that as people approach them, it's like they have to, they can't let the business go beyond a hundred grand uh, a month. You know, it's like, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like they may, they may get really close to it, but then they drop below it. And it's like, there's nothing special really about that number, except for your perception of what that number means. Like it means something. Mm -hmm. So is this a, is this a similar thing as like, oh, I'm bumping up against some ceiling. Yeah, absolutely. And it's self-sabotage that happens over and over and over. So like even if somebody in their cortex is thinking, you know, I want to make $200,000 this year, if in their primal brain, they are, um, they have these associations with $100,000 only being acceptable because uh, their family of origin only ever made $100,000. And if they go beyond that, then they may no longer be accepted by their family of origin. Uh, and so like that tribe component is going to override whatever the cortex is thinking of like, oh, I want to make 200,000. I want to make a million dollars, whatever it is. Um, and it's the same with sex. Like if you, in, in relationship also. So if your family of origin, if your mom and dad fought all the time in relationship, then that that sense of belonging with them is going to carry over into your relationship. And you will um, often, you'll see that people will do the same in their own relationship because they're tied to their family of origin in that way. Like, okay, my parents fought all the time. If I have a really healthy, happy relationship, I'm not going to be able to identify with them anymore. And they will actually sabotage their relationship because of that. So that's another, another way of looking at it all. Yeah. Do you, I mean, this, this any, to me, this is, it's another area of personal development. We can work on different areas for personal development. Um, and what I have experienced is when I focus on one area, all the other areas, there's like a rising tide raises all boats um, situation. And um, it's, it's cool to dive into one area over here. And then all of a sudden it's like, Oh, I I'm working on, improving my sexual life, my sexual health. And then all of a sudden my physical health got better. I made more money and I noticed I'm like, Oh, I'm actually being just, I'm having more fun. Is that common? Yeah, it definitely is. And, but it's like you said, it's important to really focus on different areas because I've definitely seen guys that are, you know, like top athletes. Um, I, I'm in the jiu-jitsu world. I practice Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And like, I've seen some of these top black belt competitors that, I mean, they look like a god and like, they're just in incredible shape. But if they, if there's sexual insecurity there, like it actually impacts the way they're able to perform um, in, in their competition, like it actually can hold them back. Whereas I've seen the guys at the top that like are also badasses in bed and they're like, they're just totally killing it and there's nothing holding them back. So I've uh, in like personal experience with this too. So. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> But it's definitely like all parts of our lives are, are connected. You can't just like segment and be like, okay, I'm going to be great in, in business, uh, but not great in bed. I'm going to be great uh, athletic wise and uh, eat really healthy, but not be good in business. Like it's important to have all parts of yourself be congruent. Yeah. Yeah, totally. All right. So how do we, so, uh, I, mean, I, I think this information is going to apply to ladies too. I think it's good for women to hear this. Uh, I read My Secret Garden. It is mostly for women, but it's good information for me to know, right? So uh, what, do you, what are some practices that guys can put in place? Like what, are, what is something that we can do to improve 
I imagine, imagine you're a guy like me and I, I'm in quarantine, no partner. Um, you know, one of my, one of my fears might be, you know what? I haven't, I haven't gotten any in a while and uh, I'm going to get back out on the field. And what is that going to be like? Oh no, no, I'm nervous. Uh, am I going to be able to perform? And, uh, and yeah, I, like, how do I, how do I get better? Even though I don't have a partner right now. So yeah, definitely doing yourself practice is really important. And I, I'll, I always have guys train on their own first because while you'll find women that are like wanting to explore with you in Tantra or BDSM or kink or, you know, whatever it is, like, it's, really hot when a guy just gets into bed and like he already embodies it he already knows it and you're not having to be like have him train on you <laughs> so that's why i have guys train on their own first so it's always that's my that's my tinder profile is like you want to practice you know <laughs> i may not be any good but i'll i'll try <laughs> no, i'm not gonna get you anywhere <laughs> that, that explains the results i've been getting okay but if you put on your Tinder profile, tantric activation certified, <laughs> then you may get somewhere. <laughs> Interesting. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so definitely learn on your own first. And what this is, is like, it's not just the, it's not like positions. It's not, um, knowing certain techniques, right? This is like literal embodiment. So every time you do these practices, you are more and more embodying this energy that's there. And that is what is so powerful. And when you have sex with somebody and you show up with that energy that you have cultivated in yourself, it just is like, it, it knocks women out. Like <laughs> they've never experienced anything like it before. I remember the first time I had sex with a guy that I uh, had been doing Tantra for a long time. And I was just like, what the fuck just happened to me? Like it literally changed my life. The path that I am on now is because of that experience. And so it wasn't about like what move or what technique or, you know, how many times did I come? It was about the energy that I felt. And so when guys do this work and develop this in themselves, women absolutely feel it. Um, and you can feel it before you have sex with somebody. Like I have guys uh, go through a program and then they, they come to me, they're like, women are just coming out of the woodworks. Like they're coming, you know, I don't even have to tell anything, say anything, but they can just feel that this has, the sexual energy has been cultivated and it's very powerful and it's, it's tangible. So, um, so definitely do it on your own. Uh, train yourself in masturbation. Uh, I always start with um, PC muscle strengthening with guys. Like that's a really important aspect for anyone over the age of 25. Uh, you need to have a really strong PC muscle and it weakens over time. Just like, you know, you stop going to the gym and the other muscles uh, weaken, this muscle weakens as well. So um, contracting the PC muscle, um, but then also making sure that you uh, release. So it actually kind of feels like pushing out a fart. Uh, so the release is like uh, more of a push out. Uh, and that's important because we don't want to just have a, a tight muscle. We want to have a strong muscle. And so many times people teach Kegels, which is just the contraction without the active release. Um, and mm -hmm. that, that isn't what we're going for here because in Tantra, you actually want uh, to be able to fully relax. So that way the energy can flow freely. So starting there, uh, working on the open mouth, inhale and exhale during masturbation, uh, that will help also help you start to get out of your head uh, help you uh, release tension in the body. Um, so that way when you orgasm, when you ejaculate, it's not just like squeezing out uh, an, <laughs> an orgasm. Uh, so starting with those two techniques, that's pretty basic there. Uh, well, what, how, do we, uh, how, do, how do you train PC muscles? Um, so the PC muscle is found uh, between the root of the penis and the anus. So it's that muscle there. Whenever you are peeing, uh, if you stop the flow of urine while you're peeing, the muscle that you squeeze is the PC muscle. So do that and then you know exactly which one you're working with. 
Um, and then do it, I say like every time you uh, send a text message, do 10, 10 of these uh, PC muscle contraction and releases. Uh, every time I send a text message. Yeah, you'll, you'll find it's, it's happening a lot, but. <laughs> I'm going to be in such good shape. Exactly. <laughs> That's I've, been, I've been practicing it like twice a day. It just went up to 50. <laughs> Can I get sore there? Is that, is that possible? Um, if you're not doing the release, then you will start to feel tightness. And like I said, that's not what we're going for. We're going for strength, not tightness. Gotcha. Okay, cool. What else should we know? What, what else should guys know that I, what, all right. So, uh, say, uh, say, uh, I'm a guy in quarantine and I, I do have a partner. What, what, uh, what's a way I can improve my sex life? In that situation. Yeah, I, I mean, I feel like for people uh, in quarantine with their partner, it can be almost more challenging right now because mm -hmm. all of the issues in the bedroom that you were able to ignore before, you can't ignore anymore because there's no other distractions. <laughs> and the bedroom yeah, if it ain't happening now, it's not happening ever, right? Yeah, the bedroom boredom is showing up, you know, and it is nice. Like some people are reporting, like feeling closer to their partner. They're having more time to focus on their sex lives. So, but, so that is happening, but overwhelmingly, uh, and we definitely saw this in China after quarantine ended, how people went straight uh, to get divorced, like divorce rates definitely spiked. So if there are cracks in the foundation of your relationship, they are going to be showing up loud and clear right now. Um, and so going back to the basics of communication, um, developing trust and intimacy is really important for couples during this time. And if you're just meeting somebody and you're working with them or like uh, talking with them online, then you can do these things too. So uh, there's one practice that I love for couples to do, and it's a, it's a fears, des fears, desires, fears, and love practice. So you just hold space for each other and ask your partner, the guy can start and ask uh, the woman that he's with, uh, what are your deepest desires? What are your deepest wants? And you want to ask her seven times. So that way you go to the deeper levels of the subconscious to like really get to her true desires. And it's very important that we don't turn against each other during this practice, that we don't um, take things personally, but like really just being there to hold space um, for her. And uh, like no murmuring, no talking. It's literally just what are your deepest desires? But she's she like, by the time we get to number seven, she's like, I want seven dicks. And, so, I mean, and, and then the guy is like, oh my God, I'm not enough. <laughs> then come see me and we'll work on the so the confidence the <laughs> the sovereignty like not taking these things personally <laughs> yeah all of that uh, and then you switch uh, she asks you what are your deepest desires and then you move into what are your deepest fears uh, do that back and forth and then you move into what do you love about me uh, and so you get to end up with the whole like, oh, this is what she loves about me. <laughs> but it's important. To it's a formula. It's a, it, it works. Is. Yeah, it is. And it's it is very important that you um, allow the whole process to unfold uh, and that you don't use anything against each other because you're trying to build trust so that way you can surrender, have better sex uh, and if you're just going to sabotage each other, then the whole thing is going to uh, fail epically. <laughs> what What are some um, What are some mistakes you see? Uh, like guys are like wanting to get better at sex. What are like some common things that guys do to get better? Where you just shake your head and you're like, "Oh, you totally missed the boat." Yeah, one of the big things is uh, porn. Like thinking that porn is something <laughs> other than entertainment. Um, I mean, I'm not against porn at all. Like, I think there's, I know there are plenty of studies that show the value of porn in society, but when guys like, oh, hang on, I want to know what, 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 what's, uh, what are these benefits? Uh, uh, so whenever there's access, like easy access to porn, to sex workers, actually violence, um, sexual violence, sexual aggression, those rates drop. 
um, because it, you know, there are plenty of men that need a release and if they're not getting it, then uh, that can manifest in anger and violence. Um, it's not an excuse, but it is the reality of the, the statistics right. we see. So um, that's, that's a big, big part of it. Uh, mm. But it's there, like really n seeing that porn is for entertainment. It's not for education. If you're wanting to be educated about sex, see a sex coach, uh, you know, someone who has real information about this. And um, so many guys are like watch porn. They're like, oh, I want to be like a porn star. Like I want to try out that move or whatever. And then in bed, it just doesn't translate. You know, it's like that. it was so choreographed and it's not real intimacy happening. So uh, the biggest thing for guys is to focus on the intimacy, focus on the connection, focusing on presence. Um, in the Man on Fire program, I'm sure you've noticed over and over and over, I'm like, training you, training your focus on the sensations that are in your body, like bringing you into your body over and over again. And women can feel that like when you're with a woman that will translate into like really being able to focus on her, like being so conscious and so present with her. And that's where she's going to feel seen. Like that's where she's going to feel like her, her desires have actually been met. Uh, and so that's a lot more important than um, having some fancy technique. I mean, it's not that you don't want to know those things also, like I said, but that's like the basics, the walking of, <laughs> of it all. Like, yeah, well, a lot of porn, I mean, it's for the shot, right? Yeah, it is. It may not even be a good position, like an enjoyable position. It's just like, it looks good on camera. Yeah. yeah. What else? Is there anything else? Uh, another big mistake you see? Guys make like, all right, I'm going to get better at this. Ah, I figured I'm going to go down this path. Uh, so a big thing that they do is they get caught up in their head and that messes guys up. So they start thinking, oh no, like I'm going to ejaculate too quickly. And then what do they do? They ejaculate too quickly. Um, or I'm not going to be able to last, um, or I'm not going to be able to get hard. Um, a lot of guys now are reporting delayed ejaculation. So like they actually are not able to orgasm. They're not able to ejaculate. Uh, and so, you know, those things tend to happen. What we focus on uh, tends to actually be what happens more often than something else. So if instead you're focused on like how it feels moment to moment, being in your power no matter what happens uh, those things will help sex be a lot better than getting caught up and spiraling down the rabbit hill the rabbit hole of um all the what ifs that could go wrong yeah what about advice for women in this you're you're you uh primarily work with guys what, what is uh what's some good information for women and maybe even to know about men that that would uh help uh, so for women, I mean, women have a lot of the same uh, hangups as men do a lot of the same things holding them back from ha having good sex as men. It just manifests in different ways, uh, but all the same psychological, emotional stuff, all the same stuff from family of origin, religion, society, you know, it's, it really does cloud all of our brains. So it's not gender specific. Uh, and like what women can know about men is, I mean, all women already know this, like, this is why women are such liars about sex is because like the male ego when it comes to sex is, is so big. And, um, like women have evolved to, to lie to men to protect themselves because they have had to, they've had to do that in order to survive. So it's like, that's a that's a thing and there's a lot of women that find themselves in very serious situations and so like that's just what they do uh so i guess for guys know like women are lying <laughs> about sex <laughs> all the time but there's a reason for it <laughs> uh, even if the reason isn't valid today in this relationship right now it's like wired into their DNA from, you know, 10,000 years of, of attacks on women. Um, so women like really need to do their own internal work and to heal. 
so that way they can also show up in relationship in a really authentic way. Uh, so it's, it's a deep healing work on both parts. Cool. What, uh, what have you seen uh, change with your coaching practice since uh, the lockdown, since, you know, everyone's gone into quarantine? What's, uh, what are you noticing that's different? Uh, there's a lot more people that are like, okay, I, I started this program and now I'm really going to focus in on it. I have this time. I want to come out of this time having mastered something, uh, and being a master of sex, like what better thing is there to be a master of, right? So there's, um, I'm into it. (laughs) (laughs) It's on the list. It's on the list. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's the big thing. Like guys that maybe they, they bought the program and then they were busy and it got shelved and now they're like pulling it out and like really focusing on it. And it's amazing how quick you can get results. Uh, there's a guy that joined the program a week and a half ago, no tantric experience. And he's doing practices several times a day and he's already doing, having orgasms without ejaculation. Like, and this is just, you know, fresh guy, like no experience with any of this at all, but he's just putting in the time, the effort. And he's just like already like, Oh my God, this is amazing. Like his life has literally changed in last week and a half. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. I, and I think that, um, yeah, people, people are, um, no one I know personally, but I, I witnessed this online. People are getting bored or don't know what to do. And I'm going, what is going on? There's so many things that we could get better at. And not for other people, just like for ourselves, like get more connected to ourselves, things like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, more time to do the things we've been saying we want to do. You know, it's like I always say, I was like, I want more time to read. Like, yeah, time to read. Do it. Knock it out. Want to get better at sex? Call Sarah. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> what all, uh, what are like, um, what do you, what do you sell? Like what, if someone comes, cause here's the thing is I only know one thing. I don't know anything. <laughs> so I'm like curious about what it is that if, if somebody came to your website, what happens? I don't, I've never been there. Okay. So, um, yeah, if you go to tantricactivation.com, and there's two programs that I sell. So Sex Stallion Training and Man on Fire. Sex Stallion Training is seven weeks. It's all online, privacy of your own home, instant access. Everything's pre-recorded. You just hit buy now, get instant access, and you're in there and you start week one immediately. Uh, so it's guided audio and guided video uh, to, to get you through the whole seven weeks. Uh, And that trains in the fundamentals of tantric sex. So like by the end of it, the goal is to um, have achieved ejaculation, uh, orgasm without ejaculation, multiple orgasms, full body orgasms, and beginning to move your sexual energy through your body. So that is sex stallion training, man on fire, which is a program that you're in. It's the six month uh, group coaching program where it's live training sessions each week for six months. So for six months, you get a new practice each week. Uh, You get to uh, be there in a group with me, asking me questions about anything that's going on in your love life, your sex life, relationship. Uh, And we've just got like this this awesome tribe of guys that are very supportive. Um, And then also the practices are really geared towards helping unravel all the psychological, all the emotional components of sex that are holding you back, which is what most people have and um, it's very rare to come across people that don't have that so um so it's like really holistic all the deep layers of becoming a sexual master i like that all the layers of becoming a sexual master uh hmm. i feel like that should be a title somewhere i'm, I'm gonna <laughs> add that I'm gonna put sexual ma- that that's my tinder profile that's my Tinder profile, sexual master. Yes. Would, would you would you swipe right if, oh, if yeah. you saw that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can we talk about that? What What should I have on my Tinder profile uh, besides besides that? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's that's good. <laughs> that's the one. I finally swiped right on someone on Tinder for the first time. 
uh, like in at least a year, I really have not been active on Tinder. And then uh, during the quarantine, I was on there and there was a guy who lives in New York and he's a sex coach, um, but he is, uh, I'm actually in Arizona right now and he's in Arizona also. Uh, and like, so we, that was, he had super liked me and it said, first thing that popped up sex coach. And so of course I was like, all right, I got to check this guy out. And so we've been messaging, but, uh, that will definitely, um, get you some attention if you put sexual master. Trained in Tantra. Uh, he, you know, I think when it comes to those things, like, um, the images are important. I see guys put like the worst images on there. I'm like, seriously, that's the best you have. So <laughs> is it them like playing, uh, Xbox or something or what, what, what or images are you talking about? Just like bad lighting or hats yeah. in every photo, glasses in every photo, or the worst is where every photo is a group of people and you have no idea which one is actually the guy that you're like maybe going on a date with. <laughs> Women are the same way though. I, I, it's like, or there'll be one with them with a baby and then you scroll down and it's like, by the way, that's not my baby. I, it's like, I it's like what are you doing? I know guys do that too. It's so weird. I'm like, <laughs> Oh, that's great. That's great. Uh, yeah. And then all the, uh, the things that people write, um, a uh, fan of the Oxford comma, like what the fuck? Like that really needs to go <laughs> on a dating profile. <laughs> Dude, I have a friend, I have a friend. She will. Yeah. If, if any grammatical errors whatsoever, like what's what out not not gonna happen i was like you gotta loosen up loosen yeah up. it's i mean because i think most of those things i don't, i'm just speaking for myself like most of the time grammatical errors are just like an oversight like i'm going so fast and you know didn't even think or there's autocorrect or something right so like it just you have to understand like people are in a an age where we're just moving really fast about everything <laughs> yeah yeah that's true that's true. I've yet to go on a Tinder date. I'm working on it though. We'll see. Ah, we'll see. I, was, I was a Tinder queen for a while. I had a lot of fun on Tinder. <laughs> really? Really? I, I, I don't know. I, I've, I've matched and I've started conversations with women before. And then as I'm having conversations with them, I lose interest. Mm. Uh, so I don't know if it might just be me being scared. I, I, I'm not scared of dating but maybe it's, it's something with the app. I don't know. Maybe it's like moving. I mean, maybe you need to move a little bit quicker because that definitely happens. Like if the conversation just keeps going on and there's no like, Hey, let's meet up. I'm um, like, you def there has to be a progression for sure. And it yeah. depends on the person. Like some people like to progress faster than others. Uh, but if there's no progression, it's going to just fall flat. Yeah, I had, a, I had a friend, she she wants to be chatting. She wants to talk for three months before you meet in person. Yeah, and some people are like that. I'm like, I don't have time to chat for three months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's great. Well, I think we'll leave it there. All right, where can people find you? Uh, www.tantricactivation.com. Instagram is also tantricactivation. Uh, my po podcast is on Spotify and Apple podcast and it is sex and Sarah Rose. Uh, Sarah has two R's. Rad. Thanks for joining us today and dropping uh, this knowledge on us. I know all the guys and girls are happy you came on today. Thanks for having me. All right. All right. Cool.